Hello and welcome to this short blazer tutorial. Well, when you've clicked this video, you already know the drill. You wanna lock your objects with blazer WebAssembly, but uh, it's not really true that we don't need JavaScript anymore. And I would say we have a quick look in the example application. The only thing I did here was I created a new blazer WebAssembly project or a new solution which is ASP.NET Core hosted. This means that we already got our server and shared projects and what we can do here in the fetch data razor component we see that a call is made to the weather forecast controller up here and this controller provides some well weather forecasts and now I want to see them in the console for instance and what we can do here you already know it with console right line we can uh, lock anything to the console but maybe I just want to see how do the forecasts look and when I start this application so let's switch to Chrome we open the console and then we go to the fetch data page and we see this thing here. It's nice to see that this is an array of weather forecasts, but this doesn't really help. This is not what we wanted to see. Of course, we can go to the network tab and in here we actually see the response and also the data, but this is just an example. For instance, you want to build a form, an edit form, and then see what the user has actually entered in the console and for that console write line does not work. And as I already said, well, the dream is that we don't need JavaScript anymore with Blazor WebAssembly, but that's not totally true. So what we need, and that's actually a really quick fix, is we inject the JS runtime. So let's do that. We go back to Visual Studio and up here, similar to the HTTP client class, we just say inject IJS runtime we call this js runtime and now we are able to call any method we want and i would say we do exactly that down here so we can say js runtime and then there's this sweet function here invoke void async and since this is an asynchronous method we can of course await this method here and then it takes well First, a parameter which is the actual function we want to call. In our case, that's console log. And then, as you can see here, there's an array of objects we can enter. So we could actually say, simply show me the array of forecasts, or I can say, these are my forecasts. And after that, I want to see them. And when I save this, and the app has been rebuilt, we see it already, but just to show you, we reload the app again. And here I can see these are my forecasts. And here they are. And that's already it. But of course, there's more to it. I want to show you one quick example. As I said, it's not only about console log. What you can also do is, for instance, call console time. Sometimes you want to see the time, track the time for whatever reason. And what we can do here is just call console time give this uh, timer a name like timer and then await task delay and we want to wait for 500 milliseconds for instance and then we copy this again call time and save this wait for the app to rebuild and there it is already and as you can see we have waited 505 milliseconds unbelievable now it was 504 and so on that's already it this is everything i wanted to show you in this short blazer tutorial i hope you learned something if so i would really appreciate it if you click the like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel i want to thank all my supporters for buying me a coffee that's what i really need because i am making this video in the five minutes where my son is not crying little baby son he's great but he doesn't like to sleep lately so yeah thanks for the coffee 
Thank you for subscribing. Maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter as well. So you will be the first to know of new videos, new online courses I make. And if you want to dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly already, maybe you want to have a look into the Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp. There's a two hour preview available on YouTube and a link in the video description below. We are building a, on an online browser game, a classic online browser game where we built fighters like mages, archers and so on and they can fight against each other and users cl can climb the leaderboard and so on. Lots of great stuff but apart from that I would appreciate it if you have any suggestions because this is a new series or I would say a new category of videos I want to make. Don't have much time because of you know full-time work, the baby and so on but these short tutorials, I thought about these short tutorials uh, because they fix lots of problems and they do not take a lot of time to make, to produce. So if you have ideas, anything, any feedback, please write it down in the comments. And now I stop talking. Thank you for watching. I see you next time. Take care.